So not to be another fucking Sam Sewell going to be or whatever, but and frankly, I don't really get, I don't really get super emotional uh, publicly. So to speak this and further put it in public is, is kind of tough for me to do. Um, because it makes it very, uh, it makes it very real. And uh, so my wife is pregnant, which is just, just fan fucking tastic. But for the last, I don't know, 12 or 13 years of my life, I'm 32. Uh, I just progressively used uh, like marijuana more and more, which at the time, you know, it really wasn't a lot. And it built up over time, and uh, I never considered myself to be, you know, addicted to anything, uh, or really anything like that. And um, I tell you what, man, ever since the, uh, ever since we learned the news, I, it just hit me like a ton of bricks, but from like a sense of duty and responsibility, which obviously is a positive thing, but. You know, it, I, the weight of that responsibility carried a lot of things with it that, you know, I was, I was a little scared of. And one of those was uh, coming off of, of weed after 12, 13 years of consistent usage. And I mean, I'm not as bad as a lot of other people have been, um, but at the height of it, I smoked probably three to six bowls a day. Uh, and after I learned the news, I started reevaluating and decided that you know I'm gonna I'm gonna stop um, in solidarity with my wife. That was the original reason because it's just kind of it's just kind of cruel, <laughs> you know, to to be around somebody and maintain that habit uh, when they can't do it and when they want to do it. Um, so and then I started like I found myself having to explore like other reasons why uh, it was worth it to quit because the motivation, it turned into like a security blanket for me where I wasn't even doing it to like necessarily have fun or whatever. Um, I was doing it to kind of fill like a void. And uh, you know, whether that was like physical or emotional or whatever, it was, that's what it was doing. Um, and uh, you know, so like my sleep and everything has been affected a lot. Um, appetite's been affected. I'm losing weight and all that. And it turns out, like, sleep and appetite were just... I, I was kind of dependent on it for those things. So even though you, like, can't get addicted to weed, that's a little... I'm sorry, that's a crock of shit. Like, you can, you can get addicted to anything, man. You know, it's... It depends on how you use it and it depends on what you do. And the problem with weed, I realized, is that I got a reward for doing nothing. Um, I got... You know, it didn't make sense to, like... I don't know, if I'm bored, why do I need a prize, you know? And because what it did was it made being bored, it made me like okay with being bored. Um, and that's mainly why I use it is, you know, at, at the end of the night, like I found myself wanting to be bored. It was hard to kind of turn my brain off at the end of the day, you know, with school and work and all that shit. And I really, I found myself wanting to just shut those things down, uh, especially at night to try to relax and reset for the next day. And what it did, uh, I realized very heavily this morning is that it backed me up emotionally over those years um, because what I was doing was I was hiding from other feelings too during that time and you know you gotta understand like through this consistent usage like I got degrees built up a career you know like very much fucking wife like I, I, a lot of major life events were done through the lens of this drug and um and this morning, after a very restless night of sleep, I think I got like two and a half, three hours last night. Um, so this might be like a little bit delirium talking or whatever, but I found myself in the shower this morning um, and I decided to like vocalize, like, I don't know. I decided to vocalize the, what I wanted from this change um and this is the part that gets real fucking emotional it sucks but um so in speaking
speaking truth to what I wanted, it gave me a sense of power. Um, and so what I did was I spoke to the fact that I'm quitting not for just myself, definitely for myself to be better uh, for the people that I love and to myself because I owe that to myself. But like, <laughs> God damn. That dude driving his car. <laughs> anyway, I, I owe it to my family that I'm building, at, you know, actively right now. Like, I owe it to my wife to be a better just partner. I owe it to my fucking kid <laughs> to be a better dad. And that has to start with resolving things within myself. So, um,. So in this, I don't know, in this like self-talk, I just, I realized that like I'm doing it for something that is much bigger than myself. I'm trying to create, uh, I'm trying to create something that's a lot bigger than myself. And when I consider like, just when I consider the benefits and outcomes of that, that so far outweighs the negative things, the little things, like, oh, my appetite's bad, or oh, my sleep's bad tonight, or like, fuck, who cares? I got a kid on the way, man, like, that rules. Um, and so what I'm finding myself doing is I'm finding myself needing to, like, rediscover who I am. Um, on the other, uh, I guess on the other side of this addiction. And I'm excited to meet whoever that is. Um, cause I don't know, you know, more than a third of my fucking life, especially like my adult life was spent doing this and, uh, it's going to be very interesting to see. Um, and I think one of the things, I mean, it's manifesting right now, you know, I'm by nature, I'm a very emotional person, but I, I would love to, for that to be a private thing. I tend to let it spill out sometimes, but you know, I tend to be very emotional by nature, uh, a trait that I can thank my mother for. And I'm not being facetious, that's a positive thing. I, the fact that I can feel very viscerally and have not yet become callous to the world uh, is something that I take a lot of pride in. Um, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to feel things heavily, but I think, I think being able to feel things heavily, like, allows me to interact better with other people, especially people that are hurting, and that's kind of why I'm doing this, is because, like, I don't know, like, the vulnerability and the acceptance of who I want to be and who I am, like, it's worth working through, you know, it's worth working through this shit right here, and, like, I don't know, man, like, the only way to get around something is, is to go through it, and right now, that's what I'm doing, is I'm just, I'm going through, like, this change, and that's exactly what it feels like, it feels like, you know, a, a profound change, uh, within myself, and just the fact that I have such, like, such a good why, you know, like, I'm doing it for family, um, you know, I'm doing it for, I'm doing it for love, like, those are some of the most important things in the world, and, uh, and I mean, what, <laughs> what better motivation, um, you know, but I do have to find myself, I, I have to, like, remind myself anytime I get a little crabby or whatever, like, hey, you know, there's something, there's something bigger going on, and that's why you're doing this, um, and of course that logic extends to all goals, but I think something that's important to hear uh, and I truly cannot remember who, who was a motivational speaker. I want to say it was Les Brown, but, um, you know, he said that some days in this world, the only, um, the only kind word that you're going to hear is going to, is going to have to come from you because you ain't going to hear it from anybody else. Um, and so I'm fortunate to have, you know, a loving family, loving support and stuff like that. But even then, you know, you find yourself in times of solitude or whatever and 
everyone knows this to be true because for every 20 good things that happens in your day, you're gonna lock into that like one bad thing that happened to you, you know? And I don't know, that's like, that's no way to live. Uh, that's no way to live. So, you know, daily, I'm, I'm telling myself these things about, I'm, I'm gonna start this morning was the first day. And I tell you what, after every positive affirmation that I vocalized, I cried. I'm thinking about it now. It's bringing up all these emotions. And the only reason that I'm okay being some dude fucking crying on the internet is because, like, it's backed up. This is real. This is what a lot of people avoid in their lives. They avoid feeling what they need to feel. And, uh, you know, I truly hope that leaning into this discomfort accepting this discomfort is going to make me better at handling the rest of my life because you know I haven't had to I haven't had to handle like the heaviest of heavies I haven't had to handle the death of a loved one I haven't even had to handle the death of one of my pets I've had to, I've handled the death of a childhood pet but not like my pet you know and through, I, I knew it through the years of the masking with the weed and all that shit. Like, I knew that I would have to face those things eventually. And at the time, those things scared me so much. And that's why I continued to do it. You know, I continued to kind of numb and distract. And it just... At the time, it was an adaptation. Like, smoking weed... It was something that it helped me adapt to my environment. At the time I was into bodybuilding, it helped me get my food in, helped me sleep. And at the time I recognized it as a positive adaptation. And I did not, I, did, I didn't have the forethought or frankly the courage to think about what I'm putting off and to think about what kind of problem you know, or problems, I'm giving a future iteration of myself because you know what? He'll deal with it later. But you know what? It is later. Today is later, you know? So here I am just fucking being in the middle of it. And I love it. I hate to say it. I, <laughs> I love the way that I feel right now because this is what it feels like to overcome something. Fuck, dude. Probably shouldn't be doing this while I'm driving. <laughs> but this is what it feels like to overcome something, you know? To to trudge through the aches and pains of avoidance and to just face something head on. And I mean, I'm in a much better position than many other folks. I'm not alone. And even to say that, to say that I'm not alone, that's so hard. Why is that so hard to admit that you do have support? And that sometimes the onus is on you to recognize that you have support and to recognize that there is love in your life. Like, why is that so hard? A couple years ago, we were at work, right? We were at work a couple years ago, and I've had I've had many good, good examples of women and men in my life to show me both how to be and how to not be. I've had negative examples, I've had positive examples, and I've, I've tried to learn from them all, you know? I've had father figures that are younger than me, you know? Uh, like, you can, you can take and learn anything from anybody if you just take a moment, pause, and listen. So we're at work a couple of years ago, and one of, those, one of those folks who I truly consider to be a father figure, even though <laughs> younger than me, weird as hell, but whatever. I, uh, we did this drill, and basically everyone by themselves, one at a time, went to the bathroom, and they, the goal was to look yourself in the eye, in the mirror, as if you are speaking to you, not me saying it about me, me saying it to me, and what you said was you are enough 
and even now, even now that I know that, it's so hard to do. I don't know why it's fucking so hard, but it is, you know? Over the years, I've, I've felt like I'm a strong person or whatever. You know, I, I try to let my strength manifest um, in various ways. And one of the ways was weightlifting. You know, I, I love lifting. I love taking my emotions and my feelings out, uh, you know, on a barbell. Um, like, it just, I, I love doing that. Um, it, it gave me release. And it never occurred to me through all those years of, you know, that type of progress that I still wasn't making as much progress as I thought from a strength perspective. You know, I knew how to, I had one good coping mechanism, which was lifting. It's still the main one. But, like, I just, I don't know. Like, I realized that I might not be equipped to handle life the way that I want to handle it in a responsible way, in a way that people want to be prideful of, you know, I want, I want to give my family something that they can say, you know what, that's my husband, that's my dad, and for that to happen, I have to do the work on the front end, I have to get ahead of this, and I have to say, you know what, I haven't done enough yet. That's the thing I'm reminding myself is, it's yet. I'm doing more to resolve these things. But I'm not there yet. I know that because of what I'm feeling right now. Because it's still the backed up emotion and the negativity coming up. And let me tell you, I also know what's on the other side of that. I got an idea of what's on the other side of that anyway. And I think, I think it's going to be real fucking good. And as I said, I'm excited to meet whoever I may be. But I truly intend to become somebody that, uh, through this process of quitting this drug and finding myself again, that I'm somebody that I can be proud of. So, you know, I don't know if... <laughs> Putting this out here is probably more foolish than, than anything. I'm not even gonna review the fucking footage, man. I'm just gonna I'm gonna upload it <laughs> um, as is, you know, because it's it's me. And uh, I just I don't know. I want to be able to help people. My job is personal trainer, rehab dude, and whatever. I love helping people physically. I love showing people that they can do more than they thought they could do. Um, and I think why I lean so heavily into doing that for other people is because I didn't think that I could do that for myself. Um, and now I have to. I have to. But it's not like someone's got a damn boot on my neck. It's... I have to because I need this in my life. I want this in my life. So if there's anyone out there that's, if there's anyone out there that's trying to be better, I just want you to know that you're, fuck. I just want you to know that you are not alone in that endeavor. We are not alone in this world. We were creatures that were not meant to be alone. We were created to be together, to love, and to be there for each other. Whether you're religious or not, it's the strongest, strongest thing in the world is love. And if you don't have it, try to find it. I... I want people to know that, you know, spiritually, I'm not even spiritual, I'm not religious, whatever, but spiritually, like, I'm in your corner, man. <laughs> I'm in your fucking corner. I got your back. <laughs> because I know that every person in the world has this, this well 
of strength deep down that they could tap into. And you just gotta find it. And some people it's a lot easier to find than others. Some people it manifests better than others. But everyone has it within them to overcome themselves and to be better for yourself, your loved ones. So I guess I'll I guess I'll end this here. Um you know we as children as young adults whatever we're kind of encouraged to try to change the world and it's such a daunting task and that's why nobody does it I feel like a lot of people care for each other a lot a lot less these days because it's so hard and it's easy to turn that negative and say well you know what no one cares about me why should I care about you well consider that they're hurting too like, think about the help that you wish you had and be that for someone else, okay? We're not meant to change the world. We're not meant to change the world, okay? We're meant to change our world. And that's the difference. Once you recognize that you can make everyone in your immediate circle better simply by being there for them, with whatever they're going through. If you recognize that your world is something that you can have a direct impact on, man, you have changed the world. Absolutely for the better. You can do it every day. It's fucking free. It's great. So, thanks for sticking around. Other people too have moments of clarity, little epiphanies in your day and your life that remind you that just because one bad thing happened, you got 20 good things in tow. Love you guys.